Patrice Allegre is a French serial killer who was sentenced to life imprisonment in 2002 with a minimum term of 22 years for five murders, an attempted murder, and six sexual abuse. He, subsequently, was acquitted of four additional murder charges on 3 July 2008. The investigation into the Allegre case started in May 2003, after the gendarmes of the homicide cell 31 unit reopened several cold cases. Allegre and several members of the Red Light community claimed to have been part of a sex trafficking network and that the murders happened in connection with BDSM intercourse. Patrice Allegre, born 20 June 1968, in Toulouse, was the unwanted child of an often described violent police officer and a teenage hairdresser who often cheated on her husband, sometimes in front of Allegre. Allegre grew up in St. Jeanie's Bellevue and was expelled from three secondary schools before he settled on the field of general mechanics. He lived with his grandmother for 14 years in the Izzards district of Toulouse. While he lived with her, he dropped out of school after the fourth grade and turned to delinquency, theft, and drug trafficking. He eventually became homeless at the age of 13. He would later tell his psychiatrists that he had been sexually abused and that his father repeatedly tried to stop him from offending. Allegre committed his first sexual assault at age 16. In January 1988, Allegre met Cecile Chambert, an official of bourgeois origin, with whom he had a daughter born on 23 July 1989. Despite the relative stability of his relationship, he gradually became more immersed in crime. Allegre found his victims in the station's district while he was employed as a barman in the police station cafeteria and then at the Gare de Toulouse Matabeau's buffet restaurant. When women he tried to seduce did not reciprocate, he would undress, sexual abuse and strangle them. He killed his first victim, Valerie Tarriot, a co-worker, on 21 February 1989. On 16 February 1995, after a dispute where Allegre turned violent, Chambert left the apartment with their daughter and Allegre moved in with his mistress, the manager of a nightclub where he was hired as a bouncer. He was fired from the nightclub for starting fights that scared away customers. On 14 June 1997, during a mechanic held in Foire, Allegre encountered Mireille Normand, a 35-year-old woman living alone in a chalet in Verdun. Calling himself Frank, he offered her his services as a handyman in exchange for lodging. On 19 June, he RPD and strangled her. Her body was found buried in her garden three weeks later. Allegre went on vacation in Spain, Germany, and Belgium, before returning to Paris where he lodged with Isabel Chichery, an SNCF employee. He RPD, strangled, and burned her body on 4 September 1997. The gendarmes wiretapped Allegre's relatives' phones and convinced one of his friends to cooperate with the investigators, who then told Allegre to meet at a drop-off point in Chatney Malabri, where he was arrested on 5 September 1997. His arrest attracted little attention from the media, which was primarily focused on the death of Princess Diana. In 2002 the Special Investigation Unit, Homicide 31, was created to investigate cold cases concerning murders that Allegre could have been responsible for. Homicide 31 found patterns typical for a serial killer in the murder of Josette Poirou, who was stabbed and burned at her studio in Toulouse in 1992. Another murder that showed a similar pattern was Josette Legois, a prostitute strangled in her apartment on 4 December 1987. In May 2002, Allegre was indicted for both murders. Furthermore, he was accused of the murders of Lyne Galbardi in January 1992 and of Patricia Balejos in December 1992 and the abuse of a prostitute in 1997. Overall, Homicide 31 searched through 191 unsolved murders in the region in the time between 1986 and 1997. In addition, the unit reopened autopsy files classified as suicides in the Haute Garonne's and five other departments. During their investigation, they searched for prostitutes that Allegre pimped out and found two, Florence Fanny Cliffy and Christel Patricia Bure. In 2005, Judge Thierry Perriquet said that all charges against former Toulouse Mayor Dominique Baudy and former Deputy Prosecutor of Toulouse Marc Bourag were dismissed. 
In 2004, Perrique ordered an investigation into the handling of the case by Homicide 31. A police officer, Constable Roussel, together with two justice officials, Lemoin, and the substitute, Hainch, were accused of having plotted against the accused, Borag. Roussel interrogated Cliffy and Bure alone even though the procedure indicated that at least two officers had to be present. In 2003, a new group of police officers was put into place to investigate the claims made by the former prostitutes. Roussel was forced to retire early. Roussel later published a book in which he claimed that his investigations were hindered by people within the police force and that the force had been infiltrated. Allegre claimed that he had murdered Claude Martinez, a transvestic prostitute, at Bodhi Order and another prominent member of society. The journalist Carl Zero read a letter written by Allegre to him live on air on 15 June. Bure alleged that Allegre was part of a network. He found and trained women to prostitute themselves for the network and also organized BDSM soirees. Bure also said that Allegre was involved in drug trafficking. She said that she worked as a madam for Allegre and helped him control other women and girls. Bure claimed to have witnessed the murder of Lyne Galbadi, who wanted to notify the authorities as to what was happening. She also said that Allegre provided girls to a small club for extreme sadomasochism owned by a homosexual who was murdered in 1996. Some of the sessions turned badly and people died. Bure claims that the owner of the club took videos and photos of attendance in order to protect himself from prosecution. She also claimed to have become acquainted with Borag through Allegre in 1990 and that he took part in orgies with prostitutes. Bure also claimed that she was RPD at S&M sessions by Borag. She later named Bodhi as a participant. Bure claimed that Bodhi took part in at least one S&M soiree. She said that on the evening of her 20th birthday, Allegre, Locke de Messaudine, and Dominique Bodhi RPD her. Bure also described the murder of a 16-year-old prostitute killed by Allegre and RPD at Messaudine's order because she was not enough. In December 1991, the girl was reportedly taken to Noah Lake to be trained by Allegre. Bure and Lyne Galbadi were present. However, the 16-year-old refused to take part in the training and was subsequently killed. Lyne allegedly went to the police to report the murder and was killed by Allegre. Cliffy claimed to have witnessed the murder of Lyne Galbadi from 2 to 3 January 1992 at the Hotel de l'Europe. She said that she stayed at the brothel to work, heard screams, and went into the room. She alleged that Messaudin forced all the other girls to witness the torture of Lyne Galbadi. Allegre RPD, beat and strangled Galbadi. Cliffy proceeded to claim that she was abused by members of Toulouse's Justice Department and intimidated by police after her testimony. Soon afterward she stopped talking to the police. Cliffy was then put into contact with Bure. They spoke regularly for months. She was examined by a psychiatrist who stated that she was heavily traumatized by what she experienced but that her testimony is credible. Carl Zero broadcast an interview with Cliffy about children witnessed hanging on hooks in a torture chamber, on the first floor of a house near Toulouse. Zero claimed that Cliffy hadn't been paid for the interview but it was revealed later that she received a car valued at roughly €10,000 and that Zero was working on a book written with Cliffy. Cliffy went on to change her testimony in September, she said that Mi Audine was not present at the crime scene and that she was not sexually assaulted by police in 2003. She did, however, indicate that Bodhi was a perpetrator. In July 2005, Cliffy and Bure were sentenced, respectively, to 18 months and three years in prison for perjury, reporting a false crime, and witness bribery in the Puy case. In addition to their incarceration, they were both deprived of their civil rights for five years. On 26 February 2006, the Toulouse Criminal Court found Cliffy and Bure guilty of defamation and sentenced them to two and three years suspended prison sentences respectively. Pierre-Olivier Puy, a prostitute, testified that S&M evenings were organized by Allegre and others. He said that on some occasions people had died. Puy said that Claude Martinez, a transvestite, 
was murdered in 1992 and filmed the people taking part in those evenings. In 2003, he stated that in 1996 he saw a 10-year-old girl, Marion Wagon, at one of those evenings. The girl had been reported missing in Arjun in November 1996. On 27 May 2003, Pui was indicted for making false accusations and attempted to commit suicide in prison on 28 May 2003. He also retracted the statements that he initially made. On 2 July 2003, he insisted that everything he initially told investigators was true. On 20 September 2003, Pui was found dead in a psychiatric clinic near Toulouse. His death was declared a suicide. On 15 April, the public prosecutor of Toulouse, Michel Briard, opened a judicial investigation for pimping in an organized gang, aggravated abuse, and complicity, acts of torture and barbarism against Patrice Allegre and all others. Judge Perriquet was assigned to the case. Jean Wolf, attorney general, failed to notify the chancellery of the opening of the investigation which subsequently led to him being removed from his position by Dominique Praben. Wolf was later implicated to have taken part in the S and M evenings by witnesses. Borag was accused by witnesses of being a part of the sex trafficking network. He admitted to having had an aperitif at home with Allegri in 1991 or 1992 but denied all other accusations. On the 18th of May, Bodhi stated that he was accused of being part of the sex trafficking network. He denied the claims and said that they were false accusations brought forward by the pornography lobby, who was trying to stop him as he lobbied for having pornographic films banned from television. André Mayrak, the owner of several libertine clubs, requested to be heard by the courts and indicated that he has photos of the famous dungeon. Charles Louis Roche and Diane Roche, children of Pierre Roche, who had been the presiding president of the Justice Chamber at Nîmes Court of Appeal during the Allegre affair, claimed that he had been murdered by a sex trafficking network in which he implicated himself. Both of them were charged with aggravated defamation and invasion of privacy. They then went on create a website to denounce Pierre Roche, as a corrupt man, unworthy, violent and perverse husband and father, sickening orgy participant, consumer to the chain of prostitutes of all kinds, who had made their lives a daily hell. Charles and Diane claimed that their father confided to them that he had taken part in the evenings at which ritual sacrifices and tortures took place. They claimed that he had gathered incriminating evidence on people within the network. Charles and Diane claimed that later he completely lost his mind and burned tons of documents that were in his possession. 1985, RPD a 17-year-old, attempted to strangle her afterwards. The 21st of February 1989 Valerie Tarriot, 21, waitress, found dead with her hands tied, gagged, naked, panties torn, a scarf at the back of her throat and a pan of blood under her head, initially declared a suicide. The 25th of January 1990 Laurie Martinet, RPD and killed. The 2nd of November 1997, Martine Matthias, 29, was beaten, rendered unconscious with chloroform and her house was set on fire. Initially declared a suicide. 3 1997, Emily Isps was RPD by Allegre and was almost strangled. Isp reported to police afterwards that she was RPD by a stranger and described Allegre. The 19th of June 1997, Mireille Normand, 35, was RPD and killed. The 9th of April 1997, Isabel Chichery, 31, strangled. The 23rd of September 1990, 23-year-old Edith Schleshart, found dead with a jacket pulled up on the chest. Panties and tights were found removed, a tear gas canister trapped between the thighs, ruled a suicide by drug overdose.